Hey everybody, welcome back to the Words of Life Daily Bible Reading, uh, your daily dose of diving deeply into God's Word. Uh, maybe that was a little much, but hey, it's, uh, it's day 33. Uh, let's dive right into our reading today, which is Isaiah 30, 31, and Mark chapter 7. Isaiah chapter 30. Ah, stubborn children, declares the Lord, who carry out a plan but not mine, and who make an alliance but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, who set out to go down to Egypt without asking for my direction, to take refuge in the protection of Pharaoh, and to seek shelter in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore shall the protection of Pharaoh turn to your shame, and the shelter in the shadow of Egypt to your humiliation. For though his officials are at Zoan, and his envoys reach Hanes, everyone comes to shame through a people that cannot profit them, that brings neither help nor profit, but shame and disgrace. An oracle on the beasts of the Negev. Through a land of trouble and anguish, from where come the lioness and the lion, the adder and the flying fiery serpent, they carry their riches on the backs of donkeys and their treasures on the humps of camels to a people that cannot profit them. Egypt's help is worthless and empty. Therefore I have called her Rahab who sits still. And now, go, write it before them on a tablet and inscribe it in a book that it may be for the time to come as a witness forever. For they are a rebellious people, lying children, children unwilling to hear the instruction of the Lord, who say to the seers, Do not see, and to the prophets, Do not prophesy to us what is right. Speak to us smooth things, prophesy illusions. Leave the way, turn aside from the path. Let us hear no more about the Holy One of Israel. Therefore thus says the Holy One of Israel, Because you despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness and rely on them, Therefore, the, this iniquity shall be to you like a breach in a high wall, bulging out and about to collapse, whose breaking comes suddenly in an instant, and its breaking is like that of a potter's vessel that is smashed so ruthlessly that among its fragments not a shard is found with which to take fire from the hearth or to dip up water out of the cistern. For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest you shall be saved, in quietness and in trust shall be your strength. But you were unwilling, and you said, No, we will flee upon horses, therefore you shall flee away, and we will ride upon swift steeds, therefore your pursuers shall be swift. A thousand shall flee at the threat of one, at the threat of five you shall flee, till you are left like a flagstaff on the top of a mountain, like a signal on a hill. Therefore, the Lord waits to be gracious to you, and therefore he exalts himself to show mercy to you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are those who wait for him. For a people shall dwell in Zion, in Jerusalem. You shall weep no more. He will surely be gracious to you at the sound of your cry. As soon as he hears it, he answers you. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teacher will not hide himself any more, but your eyes shall see your teacher. And your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it. When you turn to the right or when you turn to the left, then you will defile your carved idols overlaid with silver and your gold-plated metal images, you will scatter them as unclean things. You will say to them, Be gone. And he will give rain for the seed with which you sow the ground, and bread, the produce of the ground, which will be rich and plenteous. In that day your livestock will graze in large pastures, and the oxen and the donkeys that work the ground will eat seasoned fodder, which has been winnowed with shovel and fork. And on every lofty mountain and every high hill there will be brooks running with water in the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall. Moreover, the light of the moon will be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun will be sevenfold as the light of seven days, in the day when the Lord binds up the brokenness of his people and heals the wounds inflicted by his blow. Behold, 
The name of the Lord comes from afar, burning with his anger, and in thick rising smoke his lips are full of fury, and his tongue is like a devouring fire. His breath is like an overflowing stream that reaches up to the neck to sift the nations with the sieve of destruction and to place on the jaws of the peoples a bridle that leads astray. He shall have a song, as in the night when a holy feast is kept, and gladness of heart, as when one sets out to the sound of the flute, to go to the mountain of the Lord, to the rock of Israel. And the Lord will cause his majestic voice to be heard, and the descending blow of his arm to be seen, in furious anger and a flame of devouring fire, with a cloud burst and storm and hailstones. The Assyrians will be terror-stricken at the voice of the Lord when he strikes with his rod. And every stroke of the appointed staff that the Lord lays on them will be to the sound of the tambourines and lyres. Battling with brandished arm, he will fight with them. For a burning place has long been prepared. Indeed, for the king it is made ready, its pyre made deep and wide, with fire and wood in abundance, the breath of the Lord like a stream of sulfur, kindles it. Chapter 31 Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help and rely on horses, who trust in chariots because they are many, and in horsemen because they are very strong, but do not look to the Holy One of Israel or consult the Lord. And yet he is wise and brings disaster. He does not call back his words, but will arise against the house of the evildoers, and against the helpers of those who work iniquity. The Egyptians are man and not God, and their horses are flesh and not spirit. When the Lord stretches out his hand, the helper will stumble, and he who is helped will fall, and they will all perish together. For thus the Lord said to me, As a lion or a young lion growls over his prey, and when a band of shepherds is called out against him, he is not terrified by their shouting or daunted at their noise, so the Lord of hosts will come down to fight on Mount Zion and on its hill. Like birds hovering, so the Lord of hosts will protect Jerusalem. He will protect and deliver it. He will spare and rescue it. Turn to him from whom people have deeply revolted, O children of Israel. For in that day every one shall cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which your hands have sinfully made for you. And the Assyrians shall fall by the sword, not of man, and a sword, not of man, shall devour him. And he shall flee from the sword, and his young man shall be put to forced labor. His rock shall pass away in terror, and his officers desert the standard in panic, declares the Lord, whose fire is in Zion and whose furnace is in Jerusalem. The Book of Mark, Chapter 7 Now when the Pharisees gathered to him with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands properly, holding to the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men, you leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. And he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, If a man tells his father or his mother, Whatever you would have gained from me is Corban, that is, given to God. Then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and many such things you do. And he called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. 
There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of a person are what defile him. And when he had entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, Then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart but his stomach and is expelled? Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, What comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. And from there he arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon, and he entered a house and did not want anyone to know, yet he could not be hidden. But immediately a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said to her, For this statement you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter. And she went home and found the child lying in bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre, and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, in the region of Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf, and had a speech impediment, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears, and after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one, but the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well, he even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. All right, that concludes our reading for today, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in. A couple of thoughts for me for today from today's reading. One, you can see where God is chastising people for trusting in earthly things instead of trusting in him. Several times today, I, Isaiah prophesied about trusting in chariots and horsemen rather than trusting in God. And that's something that we can definitely uh, take into consideration. Do we put our trust in earthly things over our trust in God? Do we value the physical things versus the spiritual things as it's talking about? So it's a good question for us all to consider. And in Mark, Mark chapter 7 has got some interesting things in it. The uh, Syrophoenician lady that came and asked Jesus, she was a Gentile. His conversation with her makes a lot of eyebrows go up. Is, she, is he calling her a dog? And I would love to know your thoughts about that. I know I have some of my own. And then the way he healed the blind and, and, and mute man. Uh, sticking his fingers in his ears and and touching his tongue and spitting. Uh, did Jesus need to do all those things? Nope. But uh, he did for whatever reason. And uh, that's also kind of a question mark. So, listen, I loved reading for today. And I hope you guys are, are, are encouraged by diving into God's word with me every day. And we will see you tomorrow. God bless.